Welcome! Welcome to the very first video of Sheridan. My name is Jake, your friendly new neighbor and a host to this awesome new channel. We're kicking things off with a new series called Unwanted Honesty. In this series, we're going to talk about sensitive topics that are usually one-sided and any other views are usually met with outrage. These days, if your opinions are different from those of the majority, you either have to shut up or just go along. Or you might end up like this poor guy. Then it gets ugly, with law enforcement intervening only after the man is down on the ground. And without further ado, let's jump into our topic of the day. There are countless bullshits out there today that millennials have spread. There are so many! And now these self-entitled liberal jackasses think yoga is cultural appropriation. This obsession with cultural appropriation is leading us down a very dark path. Just when you thought upside fun dodging dog policing millennials couldn't get any worse, they go and brand yoga as racist. Apparently when white people bend themselves bonkers while humming or thinking happy clappy thoughts, they're not only being self-punishing steps, they're also culturally appropriating a practice that has roots in Indian culture. Yes, we can't even bend backwards without being racist anymore. How is this? Big inhale to reach for the sky. Related to this. Then is math related to science? What did you just say? What? Breaking news! Is food cultural appropriation? The answer might surprise you. Okay, some foods like this or this didn't exist, but Fusion foods are not cultural appropriation. It's offensive when it's shit, but that's just as far as it goes. So why don't you people shove that cultural appropriation shit down your throat the next time you go to Taco Bell, Chipotle, or Panda Express. Moving on. The irony being that it's hard to think of anything more racist, or at least racially divisive, and the ideology of cultural appropriation. Its obsession with cultural purity echoes some of the darkest political movements of the 20th century. The fear of cultural mixing induces social paralysis. We have a new generation who can't enjoy music, films, food, yoga, or anything without having an existential crisis. How do people not see the irony in this? These dumbass millennials are literally taking us down the history that we're trying to get out of. Here's an idea. Why don't Americans stop celebrating St. Patrick's Day, Halloween, Christmas, or Cinco de Mayo? We all but the Indians need to stop using the number zero. It's very wrong. But no! Why stop there, huh? Why? Why? Let's join hands and fight and shame all the non-Chinese soldiers, police, and other gun owners for using gunpowder. And for bonus, and everyone with partners of different cultural background must be branded with a sin that can only be broken by death. Thank you, boys. Or, or not. My wife is Japanese. I'm for the wall, aren't I? We had sushi the other day. I might as well end it all now. She likes shepherd's pie. That cow. You are doing cultural appropriation by doing your wife. My sins never end, do they? When will his sin end? I might as well end it all now. And just when you think that things can get any worse. So easy, I think this is not your culture. Hmm. 
The issue comes in when the culture becomes your culture culture. And it's what allows you to defy whatever constrictions you feel by your own personal ethnic identity. Wait, 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 wait. Defy whatever constrictions you feel by your own personal ethnic identity. Nia Tucker is a current undergrad at the University of Rochester trying to study things that she can use to make the world a less terrible place, she's a Capricorn who likes beauty, writing, activism, and Beyonce, but mostly Beyonce. It's funny how she didn't mention her precious Beyonce in this article since it's about cultural appropriation. And Jake. If I may, this reminds me of a meme that I know. Hot, hot, hot. First of all, no one here is arguing that rap and hip hop didn't come from African Americans. Second of all, you can't expect every hip hop artist to credit black artists for every success that they get. If they do, good for them. If not, does it really matter? The fact that these artists are contributing to the genre itself shows love and respect to hip hop. But then, this is just my honesty. And here are some honorable honesties from people. It's it's uh it's it's a lifestyle, it's a culture, and it's more it's it's for everybody now. You know what I mean? I feel like back in the day, more rap was just for a certain type of person. You had to go through certain things. You had to know certain words and criteria to be in the rap scene. Was it originally black? Yes. Now it's everything. It's right? everything. Yeah. My there's, kids listen. Yeah. There's a lot of there's there's man. One of the greatest rappers is Eminem, and he's white. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, not only the color has changed, but just the thought process behind it. So what do you think, guys? Is our obsession with challenging cultural appropriation justified? Or is it really just creating thicker walls amongst cultures? Leave your honest answers in the comments section and any other opinions that you wish to convey. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. Make sure to leave a like or dislike and subscribe for more unwanted honesty or any future videos that I may have for you. Lastly, do follow me on Twitter at SheridanJ and send love or hate. But the world surely needs some more love. That's a wrap, guys. Thank you for sticking around this long and I will see you next time.